I don't know if he's got another team to go to next year. <laughs> Let's recap this for you on our Caltex race score. Peter Brock is your race leader from Dick Johnson. John Bauer, third. Fourth spot held by Glenn Seaton. And fifth by Tony Longhurst. We should be back in a moment. Dick Johnson. Glenn's car looks good. It's not sliding or bucking no. too much. It's, uh, it's just doing the job, which is a, a good thing. And he should be there towards the end. Don't forget the question that we raised for you, that you can have your say on... A one-hour timed race, as all the uh, events have been uh, this year, with the exception of the uh, Wanneroo round, which was a 50-minute race. And Lakeside, which was 30, wasn't it? I, I thought that it went for half a day. Yeah, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Top five cars here, Sierras, and of course, I guess that's uh, a large part of what uh, our poll is about. These cars have been so dominant the past two seasons. Is there a need to change to put some competitiveness back into A, Holden, and B, bring back some of the other makes that have gone by the board in the last couple of seasons? They go beneath the bridge, Brocky, DJ, and JB. Glenn Seaton, fourth spot. Tony Longhurst is in fifth, and the first non Sierra in uh, sixth position is George Fuhrer, followed by Alan Moffat. Richards who uh, went to the pits earlier for a tyre change, is now back up to 10th spot and closing on the leading division. In the car with him, he actually turns a bit past the point. He's got a bit of understeer in his car and it comes out a little bit tarly, but um, he certainly looks more relaxed in the car than Dick and his car's not ducking and diving as quite as much. So uh, it's still a very interesting race. Car number 33, we mentioned him earlier. 17-year-old Brooke Tatnell running for Toyota today as part of their start search program. Bradley, you'd know uh, after watching this youngster. <laughs> it might seem a little underpowered for him. He's used to about four or five hundred horsepower around on the, uh, the clay tracks. Is he ever? I'm a sprint car fan. I always go out on the Friday and the Saturday night watch them at uh, Liverpool and Granville. And Brooke's probably trying to work out what the other pedal is there. He's, uh, he's not used to pressing a clutch down, I wouldn't think, but he's doing a great job today. Well, he qualified uh, only a tick behind John Faulkner and John Smith and the other two uh, Toyota Corollas, so he hasn't done half bad on that point alone. Well, he's one of, uh, of a number of youngsters from all forms of motorsport, the Toyota, who are given an opportunity to run in their Star Search program this year, the top two drivers. Uh, we'll get to uh, run at uh, Mount Panorama in the Tui's 1000 a little later in the year. I think Brooke would have to be looking pretty good for that at the moment. So he continues on in the Toyota. And they look good to take out the manufacturer's championship side of proceedings. It'll also be resolved here this afternoon. So Brooke Tatnell, youngster continues on. He'd have been just as happy if it had rained and thrown some mud on the circuit for his play. <laughs> yeah, then he'd start looking for some horsepower. Yeah, that's right. Is Georgie Fury and Alan Moffat. Also running in the top ten this afternoon, George, the winner of uh, Winton Round, the penultimate round of the championship. Fury is in position six, Moffat in position number seven. Fury the first of the non-Sierras. Good to see Alan up there with them this afternoon. Very determined. Running in the, uh, the ANZ colours. SO supported for the uh, Enduros uh, later this year. Also running a two-car team for uh, Bathurst and the Two East 1000. And Newell uh, Crichton in the second of the Benson and Hedges entries has fallen victim to the pace and uh, gone to the pits. But uh, Tony Longhurst is still out there circulating just up ahead of this pair. Tell Malmo Farmer. Georgie Fury. Ray of sunshine he brought to uh, Nissan after a season of fairly hard competition, winning the uh, Winton round. And did it superbly. You notice how Alan's gradually increasing the tempo throughout the season. Yep. You just get the feeling that when we get to Bathurst again, that little ANZ car is going to be at the head of the field somewhere. Wound up like a rubber band he'll be by the time we get to Mount Panorama and all raring to go. And he also picks up on the way to Bathurst, a guy by the name of Rudy Eggenberger. Won't do any harm. And also Klaus Nietzwitz, the man who teamed with him last year. They look like being... I guess it's hard to say, a guy that's running around in seventh spot at the moment, but you get to Bathurst and endurance race and all of a sudden he pole vaults six spots and becomes the favourite. That's uh, Alan Style. Loves endurance racing. He's having a great scrap here with uh, George Fury at the moment. He's having a little poke for sure, and uh, I'll tell you what, he's in a good position here because it'll be interesting to see who's got the squirt, and I, I think I know where I'd have my money, so to speak, pardon the pun. 
Oh, and Chris Lambden's borough pairs Commodore has gone into the wall uh, right at the bottom of the straight and taken the back right off the car. Mm, goodness me. That's been a very solid knock. He's gone in there absolutely smack bang backwards by the look of it. Lucky not to rupture the fuel tank. I'd be getting out of that thing pretty quickly. Well, there is an unofficial uh, trophy for the uh, first normally aspirated car to finish in the championship, and he was the points leader. I don't think he's going to collect now. No, that's pretty. Jimmy Richards, car number two. Up to ninth. See Jim two wheeling it over the top of Honda. We had to hang up on Richard then. Might get him back for chat. Uh, Richo, it's Brother Crompton here. Can you hear me? Hi, Brother. How are you? All right, buddy. I can't shake hands at the moment. No, no. We'll reserve that for later. So what sort of times are you doing? Oh, hang on to her, Richo. Uh, not fast enough. <laughs> it looked pretty fast then, mate. <laughs> Is that uh, something I should be copying? It was about hitting you. Uh, didn't do it quite right, was it? Yeah. Uh, Jim, it's uh, probably a little bit frustrating after the car was so competitive at Winton. Oh, yes, but, you know, you've got to keep, keep trying and keep going. The motorsport world during the week were impressed to see the photos of the new car. That must have you excited for 1990. Yes, it certainly does. I think it'll be a very, very good package. And, uh, you know, the cars have gone extra well as they've gone on this season, so to get something new like that next year will be real good. You're looking forward to Bathurst with a consistent car like this? I am. It's got faster as the races have gone by, but I think at Bathurst it'll be at its peak. Well, thanks again, Jim. It's uh, great looking over your shoulder, and uh, we won't interrupt you for much longer because I think it might be a bit distracting. I'd like to try and catch someone in front. Thanks, mate. OK. I might talk to you for another half an hour. Okay. Back in the lead, Peter Brock. 0-5 with about 13 minutes to go for the grand final of the Touring Car Championship and it appears that he's got away from dip just a little bit. As they come on to the uh, start finishing straight, let's have a look at it. Recap the you on the Caltex race score. Sure has. Peter Brock is our race leader. Dick Johnson runs in second. John Bauer is third. Glenn Seaton fourth and Tony Longhurst is fifth. And don't forget, you can enter at to go until the chequered flag falls out and at this stage it looks like Brock is really